Merry Christmas. The shitter was full. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Melemeliki Maka. Hope your Christmas bonus is in the mail and that you're gonna build a sweet, sweet swimming pool this year and that you don't get trapped in the attic. Today I'm going to make eggnog. Now, I've done eggnog on the show before and you should check it out. This is much more of the eggnog as it is commonly understood to be. Eggnog, eggnog. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is a holiday classic. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, it was written actually by John Hughes, which is something that maybe escapes a lot of people. It was adapted from a short story he wrote while writing at the National Lampoon magazine called Vacation 59, which was a follow-up to the short story Vacation 58. They were adapted individually into National Lampoon's Vacation and Christmas Vacation. Uh, the two movies from the National Lampoon Vacation series that can be best described as the good ones. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Actually, fun story too, just a little film history. This movie, uh, National Lampoon Christmas Vacation, was intended to be directed by Chris Columbus. Uh, I think he, he had basically his follow-up to Gremlin. And he shot, actually, according to him, a few of the second unit shots that wound up in the final cut of the movie. Then he had a meeting, or maybe two meetings, with Chevy Chase. Nope, nope, I don't think this job is for me. I quit. And so, he got off of that picture and onto another John Hughes written movie, Home Alone. Ah! I, of course, am dressed in my finest attire. I picked it up at the feed and seed on my way to the show today. Just like my role model in all things, Cousin Eddie. So I've covered how to make an individual eggnog, and you could actually take that recipe and scale up to make a batched eggnog. I think I've done that actually is on the show as well. I'm choosing this recipe because I think it's more in keeping with uh, the time and place and characters in the film. I wanna put four egg whites into my mixing bowl. I'm gonna keep the yolks here in my shaker. Not because I'm gonna shake them, but because I need to save them for later and that's what I had handy. If a recipe calls for egg whites, it's very important that you don't get any yolk at all in with those egg whites. The yolks will prevent stiff peaks from forming from the emulsification process. Success. Okay, so we're gonna set our stand mixer, and you can use a hand mixer or an immersion blender or a whisk if you really like doing hard work uh, to medium. And we're gonna let that form soft peaks. So I'm pausing now just to say that I've confirmed that this is now at soft peaks. I'm gonna turn it back on, and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of sugar to this mixture. We're gonna let that go until this forms stiff peaks. I'd say that's pretty stiff. Uh, stiff peaks, you won't see any individual air bubbles. It'll have a nice sheen to it. I wanna set this aside in another bowl that won't attach to my stand mixer. I guess if I had two stand mixer bowls, I could just do that. But I don't need to be too precious about this. Um, I wanna be a little bit gentle with it. And we don't need to exactly clean out this bowl. I just wanna make sure I save, you know, the vast majority of my stiff peaks. Now we're gonna add our egg yolks that we saved before, four of them, and about a quarter cup of sugar. Now I'm going to whip these uh, pretty aggressively until they lighten in color and fully integrate. So I see that this is about the color I want. Now I'm going to add all of my other ingredients except for the stiff white peaks, which are sitting by. I'm gonna set this to low. I'm gonna add my heavy cream, my milk, my liquor, etc. And about my liquor, I'm going with wild turkey bourbon and Eldorado rum. N neither of these have real funk or aggression to them, right? We don't want anything that's gonna be overpowering. I happen to like a funky Jamaican rum, like a Smith & Cross or something in my eggnog. Um, grandma, grandpa, maybe not so much. The blessing! I think a nice Demerara rum in an English style gets you a little bit of that funk. Um, certainly this Eldorado 8 is very velvety and rich and will be excellent here for this kind of a dish. About two cups of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, a quarter cup of bourbon, A 
quarter cup of rum, in my case, El Dorado, eight beer. A pinch, a three-fingered pinch, maybe two three-fingered pinches of salt. That smells fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna grate a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of fresh nutmeg right in there. We're gonna let that combine for about a minute. But it already looks pretty good to me. Resist the urge to turn this up too high. It'll uh, incorporate air that we don't really wanna have in there. Okay, that's a minute. And now we're ready to add our egg white. Now I'm gonna remove my whisk attachment at this point, and I'm gonna attach my spade folder. I don't know the name of this thing, but I'm gonna attach this guy. And we're gonna set this to very to low, and we're just gonna let it fold in our egg whites. It's worth it to let this take as long as it needs to. I'm waiting for this to really look integrated. If I turn it up, it could destroy the lift, the air that we've integrated into, into those egg whites. So we wanna make sure it folds, not blends, if you will. It's getting there. Mele Meliki Maka is wine way to say Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, I don't know any of the other words to that song. That is enough mixing for this nog. And let's um, transfer it to our punch bowl. Now, one thing I should point out that a lot of people have asked me about is aged eggnog. This is a recipe that will age well. It could keep for up to a year. And a lot of people love aging their eggnog. Just uh, if you're gonna age it, keep it, you know, in the fridge. It's not like shelf stable. This is a very large punch bowl. Let's try this nog. Garnish that with some fresh nutmeg. Enjoy your Griswold family eggnog. <laughs> it's good. 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 Oh my God, I love that. That is to me perfect. Perfect eggnog. I should say that that's my sensibilities coming through a little. And I think I was a little heavy handed on my bourbon and my rum pours. It is delicious. Light. Fluffy, creamy, bourbony, rummy, Christmassy magic. It's very, very good. It's very, very good. Oh, and you could uh, ditch the rum and the bourbon in this. If you wanted to do a non-alcoholic version, it's totally acceptable. One, don't attempt to age that. I, I'm not speaking from a perspective of science or experience. It's just I'm going to say don't try to age that. That seems like a bad idea. Two. Um, throw in some vanilla extract or vanilla bean and a little extra cream or milk in there to kind of um, adjust the missing for the lost ratio and to bring in some of that flavor that comes from the rum and the bourbon. But don't make a non-alcoholic eggnog. Make this eggnog. It is super good. Can I uh, get you anything, Eddie? Refill your eggnog, drive you out to the middle of nowhere, leave you for dead? No, I'm all right, Clark. Thanks. Then I think in that scene, he also asks him to loan him $5,000 or something. Like, like right there. <laughs> should drink this out of your very own Marty Moose eggnog glass, which you can get in the uh, pinned comment below. There's an affiliate link there to the Amazon listing I found for these. Uh, they are pretty, uh, I'd say pretty movie accurate. I love it. If you've only ever had store-bought carton eggnog and you try this, you'll immediately recognize that that is attempting to approximate this flavor and failing pretty miserably. This is much better. It is less sweet Certainly still sweet, certainly still very desserty. It is not a syrup the way that the stuff in a carton might be. Uh, it's all natural, it's all natural ingredients in there. No gels or waxes or whatever. <laughs> it's delicious. And if you're having some, I know you're having a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're having a phenomenal Christmas season. I hope you're having a phenomenal holiday season. I hope that you are having, I hope you're having a joyous winter as we approach the holidays. And I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, and a happy Hanukkah, and a merry Kwanzaa, and a happy Festivus, and uh, you know, if, if you celebrate the Black Mass of Baphomet, that too, I'll be there. Uh, whatever it is that you're into, have a good one. Enjoy your winter solstice, your your feast of Magna Mater. So I just hope you're having a great holiday, 
and that this eggnog finds its way into your home. It is excellent and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I am on Twitter at HowToDrink. I'm on Instagram at HowToDrink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash HowToDrink. And I'm on Twitch, actually, at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. My watches are provided courtesy of my very good friends at Crown & Caliber. And if you're interested in watches and you want to know more about them, why don't you swing on by? There's a link in the pinned comment below. And to help you with your holiday, why don't you check out one of these other videos? I've done a hot toddy. I did another eggnog that I made in a shaker. It's kind of a roots version of an eggnog, an old timey eggnog. I did wassail. Ooh, that's a good one for the holidays. I do hope they go easy on me. It is after all my first kidnapping. Not even true. Totally kidnapped John Candy in the first movie. Beverly D'Angelo, perfect wife. Lying for the husband right there. Didn't even have to think about it. The cops are here, I'm lying. She knew what was up.